I'm Malcolm Haslam. And I'm Janice Baker. Now, sometimes we need them, but sometimes we really don't want them, but we actually do need the help sometimes. Oh, at some time in our life we generally do, but sometimes when we see them, we wish they hadn't seen us. <laughs> and we're also going to meet the love doctor, uh, sometimes better known as the love guru. Stay with us on... Help. Help. What were you talking about, Janice? Oh, look. <laughs> look, you know, it can be scary sometimes when these people confront you. It can be. Oh, just by the way, hello. Hello. Welcome to our time. And the people we're talking about are... The police force. You know, it's funny because we really do need the police and sometimes we forget that we need the police. And we're very lucky because right now we have Alison... McGilvray. Oh. McGilvray. McGilvray. Alison, <laughs> I didn't give you your proper title though, did I? No, it's Inspector Alison McGilvray with Police Recruiting. There you go. Now That's we know. That's the proper one. <laughs> welcome Alison, to our yes, time. Yes, welcome. And thanks, to be here. thanks for coming along because I've always been curious as to how perhaps a young person starting off in life, they've got a lot of career choices, but how do they find the police? How do the police find them to recruit them? I think for everybody it's an individual thing. Some people have wanted to be police their whole life. Mm. Some people try a number of different jobs and then are looking for something that perhaps is a bit more exciting or a bit more challenging. And whether it's through media, social media, friends that they talk to or police they know, the little police officer tag gets thrown up and they go, yeah, I'll have a look at that and mm. give it a go. So for you, how old were you when you oh, became a police officer? I was 17 when I joined the police. And, and was that, that was... something that you always wanted to do? No, I wanted to be a teacher. Oh, did you? And I'd applied for teacher's college and my dear mum said, you'd better think about something else in case you don't get in. So I applied for the police as well, got into the police before I was accepted for teaching, gave the academy a go, loved it and never looked back. Yes, and stuck right? with you ever since. Yeah. Yes. But the most important thing now is that it always used to be policemen, didn't it? It was always policemen. Call a police man. It's not like that anymore. No, we were over history, predominantly a male-oriented uh, organisation, but we're trying to turn that around and we have over the years uh, increased our female um, numbers within the department. And at the moment we are recruiting 50-50 gender parity and have done since about January 2016. So we're getting a real boost no, of, of interested females who want to be in the police force and uh, do a great job for society and uh, be there to support the men who, of course, are doing that and have been doing it for a long time as well. Mm. Wow. Well, really, the policing started as... It didn't start like as a government incentive, did it? It actually originated, I guess, in the UK. It, uh, yes, South Australia's had a police presence um, for the oh, longest yes. in, in Australia. Now, isn't that interesting you yes. say that? Because it's also, we've had the longest council here in South yes. Australia. Yep. We've had the oldest theatre here in South mm. Australia. We mm. often forget in the rest of the country just how positive this settlement mm. in South Australia was. Yeah, and I think the police historically in South Australia have had a very good reputation in the community and we're maintaining that and it's proven time and time again that South Australia have a very... Um, positive influence in the community and we can only hope to grow on that. Of course. Over the well, I guess that, mm. that's common to every state and territory. But um, now, look, Janice, for her whole life, has always wanted to be in the police force. Yes. And I know there's some sort of test that you have to take to see if you're eligible. So could you just sort of explain? We've got a clip here of, of exactly how it happens. Could you talk us through? Yeah, we have a fit for duty test. So what it involves is putting on a 10 kilo vest and sitting in a police car, the timer then starts and you've got two minutes 40 to do a number of uh, agility and fitness tests to right. make sure that you have got the ability to carry out the role that may be required as an operational police officer on everyday duty. So you need to get out and you need to run 80 metres. You then need to pick up a couple of weights, um, 15, 20, 15 kilo, and then run 25 metres carrying those weights. And then uh, as you approach through a balance beam so that you don't fall over while you're chasing your criminal, yeah. Yeah. over a couple of steps, do some step ups. That's to get your aerobic um, rate up. Because you might yeah. have to run yep. upstairs you're running anyway. Yeah. Further, that's right. You then have to jump a one metre fence unaided so you can't get your partner behind you to give you a foot over, <laughs> which I've done before. <laughs> you then uh, have to do some burpees, so from stand to drop. Do five of those, again, all aimed at just checking your fitness and your capability to continue on after those first 
30 seconds of a minute of adrenaline, yep. you then have to rely on your fitness. Yeah. You then have to take a firearm and shoot 13 rounds. It's a, um, not a real firearm. <laughs> <laughs> Blanks. Uh, 13 <laughs> rounds with each hand. And the idea of it with each hand is that even though we've got a strong arm, that may get injured in the process of yep. what you're doing and you may have to use your other arm. Mm. And our current firearms have 13 rounds in each magazine, which is why it's 13 and 13. So um, if you've done that, then it would be reasonably expected that you can carry out the physical resp um, responsibilities of a police officer and become part of our members. At okay, Janice, what do you think? Well, I think I'm pretty fit, but I don't know that I can actually <laughs> continually do that. So, I mean, it is... well. I'm getting older now, so <laughs> it might be something, a bit of a challenge. But, but you're not necessarily looking for people who are 17 either, are you? No, we're looking for a diverse group of people and across all ages, across all nationalities, um, looking for um, male and female and also in relation to different jobs. So not only police officers, but mm. we also recruit protective security officers, recruit okay. admin, administration officers and also community constables to work in uh, different nationalities in So the I could even do it now, at my age, I could still apply for something. You could still apply, yep, so long as you, you can pass, pass, the entrance, <laughs> pass the entrance um, procedures and mm. programs, mm. then absolutely there's no age limit, no height limit. Um, there anymore. used to be, didn't there, though? You had it to did. be a fair height to, yes. to do all that. Yep. Well, I find it really interesting, though, because... Um, as a society, we're inclined to sort of zoom through life, not really thinking much about the fact that the police are there in the background most of the time, literally mm. keeping us safe. So when you go into a job like this, you're not going in to be gung-ho about it or you're going in to genuinely give a service to the public. Yeah, policing is about looking after the community and responding to their needs. Mm. So sometimes poli uh, the community need police to interact and be assertive and take control. And other times the community might need you to be supportive and empathetic and sit with them at a time of an emergency. Sure. So there well, isn't one type of personality that fits policing yeah, exactly. either. It's, exactly. it's a little bit of everything to meet the common goal of looking after the community. How has uh, modern technology affected the police force? Technology's had a major uh, impact on policing as far as helping us in our uh, crime prevention and detection. So if you imagine years ago before there was any CCTV, um, a lot of crimes would not be detected that no. are now. Right. Um, and also in relation just our processing of paperwork and administration, there's been three different um, systems in place since I joined 37 years right. ago. So it would be a lot quicker now than it was in the early days. Yeah, then. that's right. And it's yeah, certainly a lot more um, thorough yeah. and, and a lot more reliable than mm. a bit of carbon paper in well, between two bits mm. of paper. Yeah, one of the reasons mm. I asked that question too was because there are a lot of people these days who are virtually living on their tablet or their phone mm. or screens yeah. that probably are really suited to that sort of work. So does everybody have to start with that same basic training? There is basic training and there's uh, um, entrance requirements including basic computer skills mm -hmm. and technology systems. But then once you're in the police, we'll train you uh, through a 12-month training program at the police academy covering the technology and um, other skills that you require to be a police officer. Right, so, so it is just the 12 months then from beginning to be becoming a, an actual in yeah, the police? Yeah, so course. a 12-month course at the academy. You yeah. don't live in anymore in the days gone by. Uh, you we used to, to live, live in. in yeah, yes. But now people can carry on their normal home life, go home to the children at night, mm. do what they do in their in their normal every day. Right. Yeah. And so it's sort of like doing an extended uni course. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. At the end um, of it. And it's really intense, you know, we do need to test the recruits to make sure that they have got the skills that we need and can keep all... There for all the right reasons. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and what happens next, though? That's the next thing. So they've gone through everything. They've learnt to be a... What title do they have? Constable. A and they're constable. a probationary constable when they first graduate. Right. But what happens... I know that we've got some vision here of the graduation. Yeah. I really love this part. Mm because it takes me back to watching all of those um, American movies of <laughs> the police force. Yes. Movies. Let's have a look at this, because it's, it's, so it's the, something you don't think about the police doing that much of. Mm. The graduation is a real... Um, got it's me. a good time. <laughs> is it a good time? Yes, it is a celebration. Celebration, that's, that's, right. the, word that's the word you're looking for. It's a celebration <laughs> of 12 months of hard work, and often 
12 months before that of trying to get in, the process to get in can mm. take a long time as well. So if they get to this stage, they've really worked hard, they've met the requirements and they're about to enter the real world of a really exciting career where every day will be different. They'll mm. graduate from here to go on to patrols, to go into stations, to work in cells, to keep people safe, mm. and then all sorts of careers within policing once that's completed. And that, I love the horses. Um, they're such an important part of many of the sort of formal things that we have and the parades that we have here in this city. Yeah. The mounted police are historically um, beautiful and they're a great asset for us to have, but mm. a lot of people don't realise they actually play a really important part operationally in police. If you walk down Hindley Street Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights in the middle of the morning, the operational foot patrols are supported by the have mounted police. Have you noticed police. that, Janice? No, I don't no. often go down there. <laughs> yeah. So um, they, they play yeah. a really important part in mm. looking I after I love the police. throwing the hat in the air business, but I've noticed that now that not everyone's wearing that sort of old-fashioned hat. There's no. a cap come into play. Yep, so we have the formal police cap and then we have an operational baseball cap. And the idea of the baseball cap is that it's a bit more comfortable for the police to wear. Mm. It's ock health and safety. If they're going to wear it more often because they like the wear of the police hat, yeah. then it will keep the sun off their face more. Mm. Yeah. We can still be seen in a crowd because we're wearing a hat. Yeah. And it just adds a bit of formality to everybody else walking around in different uniforms, say security uniforms or yeah. um, store guards, etc. So the baseball cap is an identifying feature to yes, members of the public. Yes, it is very much so. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much more to talk about, and the good news is that we may have you back and many other people from <laughs> the, the force in the near future yeah, because it's great to connect with you and to just find out that little bit of information. Like one of your sons, she's got three strapping sons. Mm. One of them might have wanted to be a policeman. No. Never. No. Still might. No. No, no. No, no. Never no too much into that. Well, they're tall. Basketball yes. was their calling, <laughs> <laughs> not the police force. Yes. <laughs> well, look, um, we're going to be back in a minute. Please stay with us because we're going to find out about mm. love. We dock the love mm. after this break. Heartache. Oh. I oh. need a Dr. Love to fix my heart. <laughs> I can't help you. I found one. Yeah. Jane Donovan is joining us. Hello, <laughs> Jane. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, Miss Jane, I feel like I should be, you know, <laughs> operating the puppet suddenly at Place. Oh, Mr. Miss Jane, Miss yes, Jane, Miss Jane. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh dear, that no. comes from being on children's television too long ago. Uh. Jane, but this isn't children's television that you're involved with now, is it? No, this is definitely 18 plus. Mm. So, Jane. I've never done this. Have you ever dated online? Well, you wouldn't need to. No. Because computers weren't invented when you were dating. But um... He's so kind. <laughs> Flattering. Just Flattering. <laughs> we'll just forget he's there, Jane. Just you now you can talk to me about uh, your story. Fabulous. Let me. Yeah. <laughs> that. uh, that's quite all right. Have a girl's chat for a minute and I'll come well, in we... with the voice of wisdom at the end. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that one. But She'll you slap can, me no, in a minute. I will. Yeah. I'll throw something at him. Um, this all started for you when? I mean, this whole love Nearly game. Nearly 13 years ago, where I was given an opportunity to help run events with a friend who was putting together events for single people that are age 30 and over. So our clientele run from like 30 up to mid to late 70s, even early 80s. Uh, it, we don't have a limit. <laughs> it's just up to who wants to come and join us oh, and yeah. who so would like to be. Yet. Yeah, there is, Malcolm. Yeah. So, Jane, <laughs> but before that, you were an event coordinator for the convention centre here. So you were dealing with lots of people in lots of different ways. Well, I was working in production there. Right. And then I then had a production company where I yep. worked as a choreographer. A lot of similarities, though, that, you know, when you're working with entertainers that are crossing over from amateur to professional, fear really kicks in. When you're about to be given your shot at stardom... Yes. What happens, you know, really can be quite paralysing. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah, the nerves really do. Yeah, so in. I found I spent a lot of time really helping people to face their fears, overcome anxiety, nerves, etc. And then um, when I had my babies and then this opportunity came along to organise events for single people, I thought, oh, how fabulous, what fun. And then I realised, hang on, I'm coaching the same things here, <laughs> same fears. Because, because if somebody hasn't dated for a while or found a partner in life, yeah. they're nervous about... 
how am I going to read, Look, I suppose? a lot of our clients, they might have been with their partner for 20 years, 30 mm. years, 40 years, you know, and then they find themselves single because we've got a really high divorce rate now yeah, yeah. or separation rate. Mm. But then we've also got people that, you know, sadly are widowed. And now, you know, 60 is the new 40 or, you know, the new black mm. or whatever. So say. Yeah, that's it. I'm going say. with that, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're not having a sedentary, quiet lifestyle any longer. We are demanding active, fulfilling lives mm. for decades longer. So what's really exciting... Isn't that wonderful, though, to it think, is. no, really, instead of people just sitting at home thinking, well, that's it, I've done my time, yeah. um, that mm. yeah. they actually still want to have an active life Yes, well, relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And look, we operate from two levels. So the encouragement is to come and join us for a social club. Yeah. Meet fabulous new single people. You know, we do dinners for six, three ladies, three men in their age group so they feel comfortable. Where? Where do oh, you... All these gorgeous restaurants around okay, Adelaide. Okay, so anywhere, really. Yeah, well, and we're actually rest... looking at opening up in um, every city in Australia very, very soon. Uh -huh. So that's a bit exciting too. Well, the but good here... thing here, isn't it, you're not, you're not connecting via a video screen. Because no, we're I guess getting them off it, Malcolm. That's the big thing, isn't oh, it? I'm so over this. You know, the joke about Tinder. Tinder is an app where... A photo appears yeah. of the opposite yeah. gender and, you know, you swipe right if you like them, swipe left if you don't. And the joke is that, you know, the girls will get on Tinder and they'll go, left, 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 <laughs> left, 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 <laughs> oh, maybe right. <laughs> and then the boys get on Tinder and they go, right, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality that. is that, or we can go more sophisticated. You know, eHarmony is a very well-respected online mm -hmm. website. And I'm a fan of people doing everything they feel comfortable with. But what we're seeing, people that are newly separated or mm. single or people mm. that are wanting to put their toe in the water for the first time to meet other single people. That's what I've been doing wrong. <laughs> oh, God, are you going to hit me then? I never... <laughs> I, only, I didn't put my toe in, I put my whole foot in. Oh, That's what welcome. I, <laughs> oh. You know, people that do that. How many of the boys here are on Tinder? Are you on Tinder? They wouldn't admit it. Yeah, he did. He put his hand up. <laughs> what about you? Two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen. How funny. Mm, hello, we just Am discovered Am I right with the there. girls and the boys swiping left and right? <laughs> 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 but look, what I want to say is that... It, Sometimes online dating is not the place for emotionally vulnerable people. I agree. You know, if somebody's been widowed and they think, you know, this might be nice to meet some new people, or somebody's separated and they're thinking, I need to get out there more, I'm feeling a bit lost or lonely or anxious about it, you know, and they want to do it in mm. a gentle way. I'm not convinced that online's the right place because they're going to be up against rejection. So what you do then in that instance, you have people come to you yeah. and you actually put them with the like same people yeah, that yeah. have the same... So we have all sorts of different events. So I can do matched events. So I'm about to do a love boat. Remember the love, the love boat? boat. Yeah. Soon we'll be making another run. You yeah. can sing. I can't. Oh. And I can't believe I just broke into vocals sitting you next did, to a pro did, singer. No, no, you did. Well, we both are. <laughs> but, but that's really interesting you should say that because, um, you know, to have themed events because when you think about the old days when we were, when we were younger, you really didn't have those opportunities. So churches were more active in having sort of teenage social clubs and then mm. the church put people together because they were of like mind for whatever. Yeah. And those things are fragmenting more and more in our society. So what replaced them? Well, the internet did. That's right. But and that's now, all that has. Exactly. But now we've lost... You know, it's even just touching. We were talking in the makeup room about being touched, you know. Yeah. We can't touch each other anymore no. in, in a friendly way yeah. because everyone's a bit afraid that they're going to be held up for whatever. Harassment. Um, and we've lost that ability to physically socialise, haven't we? And we are social creatures. Yes. You know, we need social connection desperately. Communities are not what they used to be, you're right. The other thing, of course, is that we've never really in history had this number of single people that are post-30, you know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s yeah. and beyond. Mm. So... If somebody says, I want to get out and meet some other single people my age, mm. well, they're not going to go to the nightclubs or the trendy bars where all the 20-somethings no, right. are. They just feel creepy and uncomfortable. Mm. So we don't actually have a social structure set up for this, except I do. You do. And I solve that problem, and I love it. So the first <laughs> thing that we love saying is put a mindset of, I'm looking forward to going out and connecting with interesting people 
and having fun. Forget whether Mr. Right or Miss Right yes. is going to yeah. be there. Take that pressure off. Come to a gorgeous cocktail party or a dinner or a cruise on a boat or a cooking class or whatever yeah. and just enjoy connecting with other people and having fun. As you do that, you build in confidence you know, self-esteem starts to grow because when a relationship ends, most people will find their confidence will drop. Sure. Mm. So this is a beautiful way to get your mojo back gently with fun. Mm. And then if you're doing all of that and you're desiring love, then step into the match made events that I'm doing. I'm doing little mini mixes where there's little mini dates and I've done 36 questions where I pair them up and they do these really intricate psychological questions okay. that help people to connect better. All sorts of fun things, you know. So it's, it's look good. At, she loves her job. Look, you can see the no, look on her face. I do. <laughs> I'm, lo I'm so blessed. No. I know. Yeah, you are, but you've always had that lovely personality. I mean, if you were single, you <laughs> wouldn't find it hard to meet somebody. <laughs> Because you're a lovely, okay. outgoing person. Is my person. husband watching this? You know, <laughs> lift your game, baby. I'm, st <laughs> I'm still available, Jane. I'm still available. Thanks, Malcolm. Um, but the husband other number two. Okay. But the <laughs> Stop it to you. I think it's you. Um, but the other thing is, uh, as human beings, this loss of this communal feeling that we have. Um, maybe people aren't looking for uh, an actual partner at the time. They're just looking for somewhere to feel at home. Exactly, and yeah. that's why social. we've called it Social 8. It's social not, 8? Yeah, it's not Dating 8. It's oh. Social 8. <laughs> like, we've called that deliberately. Right. Do you know the number one cause of death in the Western world at the moment? Lack of... Social breath. isolation and loneliness. Yeah, I could believe people that. People that are lonely are more likely to get um, yeah, early death. That's pretty tragic. Um, also, though, single people that are lonely are likely to get dementia earlier. Yes. So, you know, this is actually a society you issue. Need the I think this is a crisis of, you know, people listening to this, if they're not single, they know single people. It's also each person's responsibility to start stepping up and connecting mm. instead of disconnecting. Mm, and, you true. know, maybe I am lucky that I'm born with a bit more of an extroverted personality. But it doesn't take much for anybody to be able to lead with a smile, yeah. mm, to be able to true. just say hi to the person that's walking past you down the street, yeah. to be pleasant to the checkout girl. You know, conversation and connection can happen everywhere within a few seconds. It you may know, not lead to anything, but you're gifting yeah, so a positivity. Yeah. You're, you're saying you matter yeah. in this moment. And the you matter words are so important for each of us to step up and help our culture to be mm. more connected and mm. less disconnected. So how can people find you? Oh, they can come to my website. Okay. It's social8adelaide.com. Now, the other thing is, that's a, that's a boutique service. So, you know, we charge for this because we're very good at what we do and we need to make a living. Sure. Got to pay the bills and keep providing these of opportunities. Yep. However, I've also got a meetup group which is free for anybody to join and that's called Adelaide Social Singles. Now, I'm also opening those up throughout the country. So I think it's really important that we have a very low cost, anybody can get involved platform. Mm -hmm. And then for those that want more handholding, you know, they want my coaching or I've got endless resources. I've written books, I've got blogs, I've got all sorts of resources that have I can you, support them Do you with. do this all on your own or do you have people like No, I've got like amazing you angels that, that help me. I was going <laughs> to say, otherwise you'll be just constantly... And kids. And yeah, kids. Well, yeah, so. Being a real mum in every... Yeah. Ways, shape yeah. and form. Blessed with two gorgeous children. Look, stay with us. Yeah. We've got to take a quick break. We'll be back to talk to you and our friendly police. Yes, in just a minute. In a tick. We're back with Alison and Jane. And, yes, Alison, what were you asking, Alison? Well, we were, well, just in the break, we were just talking, as we do, chow, about chow, you. Chow. Um, we, you were just saying about your children and how you were teaching your children to uh, respond to the police. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important that, you know, they know that they're there to help and not be afraid of them. But having said that, it's also about anything of fear, you know, having that accident, if they see an accident, instead of being traumatised by it, look around the edges all the angels are there doing their work. Mm. Mm. And yeah, you said angels. something really interesting. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> I've, always, uh, I've always thought that people often say that they are worried or sad when they hear sirens, but uh, I think hearing sirens is a great thing because it means help is on the way. Mm. Mm. Great advice. So uh, joining the police, 
where do we find out about that? Because now everything, as we are talking about websites before, everything's attainable on a website. Certainly. So on our police website, we have a site to achieve more and all the information you need to join the police, whether it be as a police officer, a protective security officer, call centre officer, administration, is all on that site and it will lead you through the process to join the police and start the best career of your life. Brilliant. At oh. any age too, I yes, would add. Yes, correct. At any age. Um, and it, you must be 18 or over to join the police. There you go. Oh, we Not both so qualify yet. for that, I think. <laughs> uh, how much is the police really like all the TV shows we see? That's one question we really should ask you. Uh, we don't always solve the crime, but we do always do our best <laughs> to help the community. And certainly we have of, um, interesting times behind the scenes with police mm. and the fun that I'm we sure have on our do. workplace. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you do. Well, you wouldn't have stayed as long as you have, had you no, not enjoyed that's right. it? No, you're time. the best advertisement possible. Yes, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, girls, yeah. uh, to pleasure. hear about thank the you. police and how to love everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Janice, will we come back again next time? Let's do that, Malcolm. Shall we? Yes. So keep yourself nice till next time we see you. And remember, the Facebook address yes. and our YouTube address... Is, Which is? Is uh, Our Time TV Channel 45. Channel, channel. Chan I channel, said channel. Just channel. Oh. Our Time TV okay. channel, but of course you can watch us right throughout the country on your local community network. Till next time. Keep yourself tidy. And nice, and we'll <laughs> see you then. <laughs>